Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new to this channel, then please press the subscribe button and like this video. In today's video, we're gonna be building an app like YouTube where people can upload their videos, share it, and then others can watch it, and then like, dislike, and comment. So this is gonna be a really cool app. I know a lot of you guys are gonna be interested and see how I'm gonna build something like this. And that's actually super simple. So I'm really glad to share this with you and I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm gonna open up the terminal and then type in Rails new. I'm gonna call it YouTube Rails. And I'm gonna pass in the database option as PostgreSQL. And then for CSS, I'm gonna be using Tailwinds. Then I'm gonna run this. It's gonna create the app. Now that we've done that, we can CD into the app. And the first thing we have to do always is create the database. And then now we can start the server, go to localhost 3000, and we'll see that everything's working. We see the Rails logo. So we're ready to start building this. So for this app, actually, I'm going to be starting off by creating the models. Usually I create a home page, but for YouTube, the home page is the list of videos so we're going to create these models first so first we're going to do the user model so we actually are going to add device so let's do bundle add device and then the rails g device colon install now from this i'm going to quickly do rails g device user to generate the user model then we can also do the other parts of grabbing the alerts and putting those in the app. So now I'm gonna open the code in VS Code. Now that we're in the code, I can go to the app folder, views, and the layouts folder. Inside here in the application.html, I'm actually gonna delete this main because I don't like the styling that it adds, but you can leave that if you, if you like it, just add some padding. But I'm gonna delete that real quick. And then inside of the body, I'm gonna render our partial for alerts and I'm going to create that file underscore alerts.html.erb then we can put the that alert code in now we can start the server again and we'll see we have some pending migrations for the user model so I'm going to run that and we still don't see anything so we actually have to set the root of the application but we haven't created the post model we've only created the user model so real quickly, I'm going to create that. And I guess I'll call it videos, because that's what it is. So a video will actually have a, well, we could call it, let's call it posts. So we're gonna scaffold post model. It's gonna have a video field, which is gonna be type attachment. It's also gonna have a description, which can be type rich text. And it's gonna belong to user. And then it's also going to have some more fields with like the views, the likes, but we can add those after. So let's just keep it simple. Right now we're adding a video, a description, and it belongs to a user. So now we can generate this. And then we also need to do Rails action text colon install, which is gonna add the migrations for action text and active storage. So now that we do that, we can migrate the database. Now everything's gonna be set up again. We can start the server now we still haven't set the root so we can go into the code again open the config folder go to routes.rb and then down at the bottom we have the root but it was commented so i'm going to uncomment that and then inside here we can leave it because it's already pointing to post index so that's perfect right here we're on the post page now there's no post yet but if we click here then we'll see we have the option we have a video, description, and then there's also a user. Now, we don't wanna have the user fields uh, shown. It was just added because we did scaffold. So I'm gonna quickly get rid of that field. So if we go into the code, we open the app folder, post, and then go to the form partial. We'll delete that field with the user ID. And then also in the post controller, all the way at the bottom, we need to remove user ID from the params 
because we don't want to allow people to change the user ID by themselves through the form. Now that we've done that, we can go up to the create method. And I want to change this so that we're saving the user so that because right now when we create the post, it's just going to create it by itself. It's not going to save it to a user, but we can quickly fix that by replacing this with current user dot new. We need to make sure that the user model has that association, which it doesn't have it yet because we just scaffolded the posts model and it doesn't automatically set up. So we have to open in the models folder. We need to open user.rb and then add has many posts to set up that relationship. So we can do something like current user .post new and then save it on the user. So now that we did this, we have this option to add a video, which I'm just gonna, I already have a lot of videos cause I, I've been creating YouTube videos. And then this is the video. I'll create the post and it looks like, oh, I didn't sign in as a user yet. So we actually can fix that by, or we can, we can add a before action. Authenticate user, which on YouTube, they don't usually make you sign in before you look at the videos. And we could handle that use case too. All we'd have to do is we could change it to do only, or actually let's do accept and we'll do accept the index. So then you're able to view the index without signing in, see? But as soon as you go to new post, you need to sign in. And that's kind of how the YouTube experience is. So we can do that for this video. So it looks like we're gonna need to sign up. So I'm gonna sign up with a new account. All right, now that I've signed up, I can go and post that video. Okay, and we actually, we have the video in the description, but I forgot to add the title. So we'll probably wanna do that. And then also we can change this. We can fix up the, the partials because these are gonna need to be restyled. So really on the index page, we're just gonna show a grid column of all the videos and we're gonna show a preview. So I'm gonna show you how we can do that pretty simply. So if you go into app, views, posts, and then the index.html, where we're rendering all these posts. Let's add grid, and then we'll do four columns. And on the post partial itself, we'll do some styling changes here. And then we can also display a uh, preview of the image. So a way that we can do that, is we can say post.video preview, and then we have to add an option to resize it. And then we grab the processed URL. But now we're getting this issue. So the solution to this on Mac is to run. Okay, now that this is finally finished installing, hoping that the preview should work. Looks like Please set active storage. Interesting. So I guess the best way is to do this. Oh, whoops. Set the current host. Host URL. I'm going to go into the config folder, initializers, and I'm going to add a file called constants, and I'll set this here. We can actually check if rails.env development. We'll set this to localhost 3000. And then whenever we release to production, we could handle setting the production URL. Inside of here, oh whoops, I actually didn't mean to put this in the user model, 
because we're doing it on post. Right here we'd say video thumbnail. Whoops, video thumbnail. And then we would go and take that code that I had here, the preview code. And then we could make this reference a video thumbnail link. Now this should work. Okay, now we have this. Oh, let me restart the server so that it knows about the constant. Hmm. There's an issue. I feel like it has to do with my initializer. What's the problem? No, it's not there. Okay, I'm having a feeling that it might be to do with this host URL. I wonder if that's uh, taken constant. We should say. Let's just call it domain. Still not liking it. Okay, I'm just gonna delete the whole file. I'm not sure why it's not starting. Something to do with the initializers. Boot snap. Okay, it's actually something, it's not to do with the. Okay, I wish I didn't do that. I should have tried the other thing first. Okay, let's just leave it to, the, to localhost 3000. And actually, it should probably be using HTTP too. It has a full URL. Now let's do rails temp clear. Now try. Because there's an issue in the temp. Okay, now it's starting. Okay, now it, it doesn't know. We can change it to domain and it should know domain. Now it's saying undefined method. Okay, so that must not be a thing anymore. Okay, maybe we don't, maybe we just, the, the thing is we need to do it inside of the model. Okay, but it doesn't know preview. We need to do video.preview. Right, and still having a problem with this. Okay. So there's a concern that we can use. So that's the thing that I was missing. Let's go and include this on the post model. Include active storage set current. And that should fix the issue. Oh. Wait, where do we do before action? Oh, because, <laughs> got it. Interestingly enough, it says this is something that we'd have to do on the controller. So we do it here and then maybe we leave the code in the view. Okay. Oh, hey, that works. Uh, we can probably look into this later and see how we can make this work better. But at least we're getting the preview. And then we would see, uh, we don't really want to show the description because that would have, that would take too long. And we also want to turn this all into a link. So when you click on the video, so yeah, you'll see the flow. 
if we go, I also want to add some padding to this page. Post page, and then a little bit of space between the title. So we have this, and then when you click on the post, I want it to go, instead of having these links down here, I actually want to remove those links, which is in the post partial. We could delete that. And I just want, when you click on this link, it takes you to the video. So I'm going to do that in the post partial. I'm just going to wrap this whole div in a link that links to post. And then we have to add do to turn this to a block. And then we wrap the code and then we do an end at the end. Now, when you click there, it actually brings us to the video. And on this page is where we would show the video. So if we go to the show page, we can actually stop rendering the post. And instead, let's just do a video tag for the post.video. Okay, now we're showing the video, but we don't have any way to start it. So we need to go back into the code and set controls true. Now if we come back, we'll see we have player controls. So we can watch the video. But now we'll see down here we have some links like edit, destroy. We don't want to have that uh, for any user. So to change that, we can say if current user equal to at post.user. Then we can wrap these two links. So if it's not the, if you don't own it, uh, it wouldn't show this. Now the next thing I want to do is actually add the title because I didn't start off with that. So let's quickly add the title. So I'm going to go to the console, do Rails stream migration, add title to post. Title is just going to be a string. I can do Rails DB migrate. Now we're just going to have to update the view. So if we go to the form partial, I'm going to do it right above the video. This needs to be a text field. And then we just have to go to the post controller and permit that title into the post params. Once we do that, we can name our video. We can update it. Now we're able to view it. And if we go back to the main page, we'll see this. And we don't see the title yet, so let's add the title into the post partial. So we'll just put it right underneath the video. We'll display post.title. We can even make it bold and a little bit larger than the rest of the text. Let's see, okay, I probably want it a little bit larger and less margin. go so now we see hey my first post posted by this uh, we can reduce the margin on this one too that posted at and then you click you go to the video you can watch it so this is really cool this is already like the bare bones to YouTube and then we can go create a new video the next video <laughs> and we can just select create it Go back to post and we already have this cool lineup of the new videos that we can watch as a user this is already really exciting we made a lot of progress and there's still some things some improvements that i want to add like adding a view count we can actually do that really simple so if you want to add views let's just go and add a column for views let's say rails view migration add views to post and then for views we're just going to call it views count and this is going to be type integer. So we can create that. And I'm actually going to want to edit this. So we can do for a quick edit is uh, copy the route that it returns. And then we can do Vim. Or to keep it easy, let's do it in Visual Studio Code. So now that we have that thing, we can press con Command P. Or if you're on Windows, Control P. And then you can go to that migration file. Or you could have just navigated on the side to the DB folder and find the latest migration. But in here, uh, I want to set the default to zero. So every time a new post is created, it defaults at zero. 
And then the way that we're going to update it is in the post controller on the show action, we're just going to say post.update and we're going to increment the view count. So post.view count plus one. It's as simple as that. And then now on that show page, I want to display the view count underneath here. So we're showing the video, or we're not showing the title, so I want to show that title. Let's use H1. And we can even do bold, Let's say post.title. Whoops, let me start the server again. And we have to run that migration for the view count. So we see the title right here. We probably also want to show who it's posted by. I'm just going to copy this code from the post partial. And it's posted by this user. And then I also want to show the view count. So we'll say views post dot views count. We'll refresh, we see we have view, three views. And every time we refresh, we get more views. Now in reality, I think YouTube has a little bit of more uh, logic in here where they might not uh, give you a view until somebody actually clicks, which we could add that too, but that would require us adding some JavaScript. So we're, for right now, this is kind of simple. And I think this is usually how you might think that YouTube works. So it wouldn't give the view all right on the index, but actually let's show the view count here because that's what they do on YouTube too. So we can just copy this, bring it over to the post partial and show it right here. Oh, whoops, but uh, since we're in the partial, we have to use the post variable, not an instance variable. And now we can see the views. You see this one has five views, this one has three views. This is already really cool. Now we've implemented videos and we've added a view count so we can track how many times your videos have been viewed by other people. This is really exciting. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and you're having a good time. If you haven't already, please press that like button and subscribe in the real video while we're building YouTube. Okay, now I wanna quickly add likes. So we can go and we can generate a model for like. A like's gonna belong to user and it's also gonna belong to post. Just do that and then we'll migrate the database. Start the server, but we're also going to have to go and edit the models so that we can add the association to the post and also the user. So say inside the post has many likes and also we'll add this into the user model. Now that we have that set up, we can go back to the show page and we can underneath the views, we can now show the likes. So the way that we can show the like count is we could just do likes.count. And you'll see there's zero likes right now. And then we can add a button to like it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the like button right before the count. So for that, I really wanna do an icon. So I'm gonna use hero icons to get the thumbs up. This is a really cool website and they already have SVG I can use. We could just take this and we could put it right into the view. Or another thing that I like to do is use view components. So to add view components, you can just say bundle add view component. That's gonna add the gem for us. And now that we did that, we can do a Rails G component icon slash thumbs up. And I'm gonna pass in a sidecar option. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna organize it so that inside of the folder created components, we have an icons folder, and then we have the component and it puts it into its own folder. I just kind of like that, but you don't have to do sidecar option if you don't want to. It's just usually how I do it. And then inside of here, we put the SVG. So if we go back here, we take that SVG and inside of that component, we can put it here. Then on the view, instead of just displaying it well, like that, we can render icons thumbs up component. 
And if we go back, oh, I need to start the server. Oh, we see we have the thumbs up link. We're gonna need to style this, so I'm actually gonna change it from a P to a div and I'll add flex. Oh, that got a little bit big. So I guess I'll add, well, this is gonna be a link anyways. So we need to do a link to, that's gonna go to the like path, but we haven't created that yet. So I'm just doing a blank URL just to test this. And I guess let's do width 10, which should add some sort of width. Okay, there we go. Now we see this looks okay. We can do even item center so we can get that like count centered. And then maybe when you hover on this, it could turn a cool color. For that, we can just hover. We can change the color a bit. There we go. And then when you click it, what I want to have happen is, uh, you know, it, it probably would change the state of it. Maybe it could, it could keep that or it could get filled in. I think with your icons, you have the option to get solid. So we could do, we could have a, a filled in one. So let's add that girls G component icons, thumbs up solid. And then we'll do the sidecar option again. You don't have to, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then we can go into there, add the solid one. And then that's what we'll display if it is liked. But we don't have We do have the like model, but we need the like path. So to do that, I'm gonna go into the routes and let's do it inside of the posts. I'm gonna nest the route. So I'm gonna go in here, add a block, and then I'm gonna do scope, module posts. And inside of here, we'll do resources for the likes controller. We'll have a create action. Then we'll have the delete action after, or the destroy action for Rails, just to dislike the video. But we can do that in a second. So now that we have the route set up, we can go and create the controller. So go over to controllers folder, create a new folder called posts, because that's why we have the scope module posts. It's gonna have let us to have this namespace. And inside of that post folder, we can create a file called likes controller. Then we're gonna have to nest this in the module for posts in the class likes controller. You can inherit from the application controller and then it's gonna have a create action. Inside of here, we can get the post by the post ID. And then we're gonna say post.likes create. Or actually, let's say current user dot likes create post ID at post ID and then once we create it we'll want to update on the page so if we go back to the show page we just have this right here let's move this to a partial where we'll render the like button then we'll pass in the user which will be current user and a post should be at post. So we'll go and create that partial. We can put this link inside of here. And then I'm going to add a condition, which will check if the like exists. So we'll say if, or we'll say like equals, this should be pretty easy actually, like equals say if like equals current user dot likes where post ID is post ID. So if that like is there, then we'll have this link. Uh, it just looks messed up because there's also this block for the link. We have to do the else. So this is the like. And in the other case, we're going to have another link, 
but instead of having the regular thumbs up component, it's going to be the thumbs up solid. So we'll see what that looks like. See, now it's solid. And then if you click on it, it would actually go back to the outline one. But right now, neither of these are working. And actually, uh, if like we need to switch this logic around so that if the likes found this would be the dislike up here and then otherwise there's no like so we're going to show the like button the regular the first one and then this is going to go to the post likes path and then we have to make it do a post request so we can add a data option turbo method post. Now if we go back, oh, missing option, because we need to pass in post to this, to this as a param. Now we're going to make the post request, but uh, we're not, we're not turbo streaming from that light controller yet. So in here we need a turbo stream, but in the like button, we should actually wrap this whole thing in a div with the ID. We'll use DOM ID. And here we can say DOM ID for post like. This is going to create a unique ID based off the post. And then we're going to use that to update it. So now we can go into the likes controller. We can say render turbo stream, turbo stream dot update dom id post likes, and then a partial of the post like button. And then we have to pass in the locals, user, current user, and then the post, the post. Now, if we refresh, oh, it looks like we have an error in the, in the code. Uh, in the like button partial. Okay, we had a typo. Uh, I had a Ruby end and I meant to do uh, the div ending. So now that I fixed that, oh, we actually don't see anything, that's weird. Why would that happen? I'm kind of confused now. Oh, okay. So there's some, I guess we need like a, a minimum width to get the icon to work. Okay. I guess what we're saying is um, on these, the width 10 is not working. So instead we could just do it on the div with 10 up here. It should have the same effect. Okay. I'm gonna get rid of the BG blue. Now we should be good to go. Oh, okay. It doesn't know about DOM ID in the likes controller. So back here we need to include action view record identifier because DOM ID is a method off of this. So if we're going to use it, we need to include the methods in that class. Now that we've got that set up, uh, you see the like went through, it just didn't update. So if we go over to the other post we didn't like yet, uh, I think it was okay. The other one, see it, we don't have the like. We click, oh, actually, it should have turbo streamed, but did I have the DOM ID wrong? Oh, I called it like, but in the likes controller, I called it plural likes. Uh, I don't know why I did that. Okay, let's fix that. So we're we're actually gonna go to the post like, cause that's what we, we call it on the page. Uh, but we don't have one to test on, so let's create a new post. New video. This 
is my best video yet. Okay, we created it, and now I want to test out the like button. Okay, we click, and just like that, it goes solid. But one thing, it doesn't update um, the view count. So let's quickly add that. So actually, to do that, we can go to the show page. It's right on here, the likes count. Let's actually just move it into the like button, because then that'll take care of that issue. We put it inside of this div, and then we might want to add flex item center. The only thing that now is going to be an issue is because we have the width 10. We're going to have to move that into... We're going to have to create another div width 10 just to wrap the icons. Okay, and there is... there's We need to fix the space here. So up on the, on the div at the top with the flex, we can do gap 4. Just going to space them out more. And now it actually will update the account too. If we create a new video again. Which actually some of these none of these are required. We might want to validate to make sure that they are required in the future. But we've been moving so quick. So yeah, you saw that when you like it updates account. Now if we want to go back and or what I want to do is I want to add the logic is right now when you click dislike it doesn't do anything oh actually <laughs> it looks like there's kind of a glitch where it created it tried to create new posts for some reason okay that's not what we want to have happen so if we go back to the show page or actually no back in the like button partial so in the first case when there is a like we need to add the delete row so we're gonna say is post like path then we're going to pass in the post and then the like variable which we're setting by this query right here so if we find the like then we're going to show the dislike button and we're going to pass it into the path and we have to make it do a delete request so we can do a data option turbo method turbo method delete Uh, doesn't have a route for that, so we have to go into the routes RB. Remember how we had uh, this likes route, but we we're only allowing create. We need to also allow the destroy route. And now, when we refresh, we'll see that we do have the route option. Uh, we have the route available, but we don't have any logic in the likes controller. So inside here, we need to add that destroy method, and then we'll have. We'll reuse this code, but I'm going to move this post into its own method and that before action to set the post. We can do that down in the private, set post. Now we're going to have the post available in each one. What we're going to do instead of creating it, we're going to find, and then we have to remove this post ID. So we're just finding it by the post ID. Let's say like equals. And then we're just going to render uh, the like button with the post, current user, everything all again. But first we're going to destroy the like. And now we'll see what that looks like if we press destroy. And then we could like it and we could keep going back and forth really. Oh, bit of a glitch. Huh. Cause now I'm not I'm not able to could not find like interesting. Let's go in the console and see how many likes do we have. Hmm. This is kind of interesting. So maybe we need to say where post ID destroy all so how about that we'll just say current user dot likes where post ID is that this post ID will destroy all that should fix that there we go because I think there's an issue with when we spammed it created more than one like but now we're able to do this over and over again and if you look at the console it's actually updating and then it's broadcasting 
from that route. So we're getting this UI change right from the back end without using any JavaScript. We're able to like and dislike the videos. We might want to also show that on uh, this page, on the index page, right next to the views. Okay, so to display the like count on the post page, we can just copy this and then we'll change it to likes.count. Change to likes, so now we can view it on the index page. Let's see, all of them have likes because I've liked all of them. Then if I dislike that one, or really it's just unliking. If we wanted to add a dislike button, we could do that also. But I think it's cool if we just leave it at like, and you already saw how we can implement that. So if we want to implement an additional column just like this for dislikes, you could do that also. But I think this is pretty cool just to see what we could put together so quick. We already have a working demo of something like YouTube. And now from here, you might want to implement more stuff, you know, like cleaning up the UI, making it look a little bit more pretty, maybe adding a search button up at the top so that you could search for these different posts. And also trying to implement some sort of algorithm, like the YouTube algorithm, but a small mini version, maybe add an AI. That would all be really cool ideas. But if you guys have any cool ideas that you want me to build for future videos, please comment them down below. I'll see you guys in a future video.